Thank you everyone for being here. My name is Pradeep Kumar, and today I'm going to talk to you about BMC Helix Multi-Cloud Service Management. It is a SaaS application available to our IT SEM customers using cloud-based services. It provides a single pane of glass for managing all of your tickets in a seamless wow. fashion. I'm sure by now you have seen BMC's legal disclaimer a number of times. Let's just spend a minute or two just trying to get a sense around at BMC, how do we view this um, landscape, the landscape, the environment in which we operate in. We know multi-cloud is a reality. Most enterprises today are using more than one cloud, be it infrastructure as a service, um, computer as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. Uh, multi-device, a uh, lot of devices making into our, our, our environment, right? Multi-chain customers, our users are demanding uh, service on the go. DevOps is, is a core theme, right? We are trying to get things faster and sooner to our customers. Capabilities delivered to, to our customers at a much faster, easier fashion. And then big data, right? So these are the set of mega trends that are empowering the environment in which we operate in. And I must tell you that from our point of view, we think cognitive automation is the key to deal with this complexity, right? And um, as you can see in some of these capabilities that I'm gonna show you, you will see the next level of automation, the next level of intelligent automation, the next quantum leap in this efficiency that we will see. So let's just get into it. To drill down a little bit deeper into the problem statement, our IT landscape has changed a lot. We have a lot of cloud environments that have come into it and our and our, our goal is to be able to provide that excellent service to our stakeholders. Now we are reliant on these other third party providers. We have a different set of challenges that we ought to be able to deal with, right? So uh, as a head of service desk, uh, we need to think about how do I service our apps and protect our data. In general, this is the whole cycle where you have to be preparing yourself for new releases from these third-party vendors. You ought to be able to discover these environments. You ought to be able to service these applications that you are running in, on, in those environments, collaborate these pro with these providers, and then monitor the, the, the performance as well as you know SLAs, and then share and collaborate knowledge, right? Those are the set of challenges that we have in a multi-cloud, multi-provider landscape. What is BMC Helix Multi-Cloud Service Management? Multi-Cloud Service Management provides pre-built solutions for ITSM processes that extends beyond the tool itself. That is, when you have a need for incident change, problem, work order, these processes to closely integrate with other vendors' tools, these pre-built solutions are flexible and extensible, and they come as ready to deploy. So what it means is you, you can point this service to your ITSM application with your credentials and to your vendor application, and the service starts functioning. It's ready to go. Some of the most common use cases are integrations with agile development tools like Zira software or integrations with your cloud vendors ticketing tools. The pre-built solution is easily extendable and enriches ITSM UIs with vendor ticket information on all the clients that is our mobile and universal client. So if you have a ticket that you want to collaborate with your cloud provider, for example, AWS, you can um, just very quickly broker that ticket out to AWS um, with a pre-built connector and integrations. 
you can enable that integration and you can then have visibility to AWS case information on in, in your smart ID ticket. You can not only have visibility to their case number and all other relevant attribute that you may be interested in, you can also, um, your agents in smart ID interface can collaborate with the, van, with the agent at AWS end. And then you can keep these records in sync to be able to have one comprehensive view of this case or this ticket. It allows you to have a single pane of view, right? Single pane of glass to be able to say, hey, I know at this point of time, this ticket is with who, who's working on. Multi-cloud service management comes with pre-built integrations with many of the cloud vendors, agile development tools, and cloud monitoring products. It also offers capability to build a connector for any custom application while allowing you to reuse some of these out-of-the-box infrastructure that is available for these uh, pre-built integrations. So some of the themes that this, um, you know, so far that we have addressed with this product is um, ticket brokering, of course, this is a standard topic that you can, um, you know, you have multiple systems, be it your in-house systems or different service desk applications that you may be using, or a cloud vendor's ticketing system, which is in cloud, for example, AWS, Azure. Um, DevOps use cases, those are exciting use cases, right? That's a, um, there is a lot of collaboration between your dev tool and your IT ops tool, right? So when there is a ticket that comes into your service desk that requires attention from your developer, um, you can now just the click of a button or by configuring the application, have these tickets go directly to the dev tool and have cross application visibility, allow these two personas, the service desk persona and the developer persona to collaborate with each other. And then um, obviously consolidating tickets across different uh, different service desk applications. And then um, cloud monitoring allows you to have pre-built out of the box integration with the monitoring tools that you, you may have within your cloud providers. Real difference that BMC is bringing to the table here is that we ship a pre-built integration that is ready to go. If you subscribe to the service, you can just turn that integration on to the point that all you need to do is you need to provide your ITSM credentials and your you know vendor credentials, vendor account credentials. And once you once you point to the right sort of accounts on both ends, the transactions starts flowing. And uh, so, so that's the sort of application that, that, that we're shipping here. And uh, just so you know, this is a connector-based application. We're gonna look into the architecture a little bit more, um, but it's just not connector alone. It is, we put these connectors together in a more like hub and spoke type of an approach. So this allows you to have a um, much more optimized in interaction with, with, with your ITSM application, right? So you, if you have to build these many integrations, obviously we are adding more and more every release, then you, you do not end up with a, these many point-to-point -point integrations. You have a, an architecture and a approach that allows you to have a more like a hub and spoke type of a model and allows you to reuse some of this content for any new integrations that you may wanna build. So again, I, this, I covered this a little bit. Most important value that you get out of, number one is elevate your ITSM for DevOps, right? And this is one of the most important uh, uh, use case that we have heard from our customer. Um, and so DevOps is a norm, right? In a, all of our environments uh, these days, practicing DevOps as much as possible, right? So the, the implication with, with, with respect to the ops and dev tool is to be able to have these tools talk to each other very, you know, in, in a much more smooth, agile fashion. So, uh, so let me give you an example here. So let's assume you have your, you know, you're using Salesforce uh, uh, as an uh, as an application in our environment, you have a small team of developers, and they take care of your 
configurations as well as some customizations on Salesforce platform, right? So um, now, you see, you know, let's say you have a ticket come, come into your service desk, right? That's relating to, um, to the Salesforce deployment, right? So VP of sales calls into service desk or their assistant call, calls into service desk and says, hey, we like this field to be added on these let's say opportunity object in Salesforce. Now this is something that's a request that will be taken care of by the developers, right? So you want the ops or the service desk level one, level two, level three folks to be able to collaborate with developers um, and at the same time have this cross application visibility, right? So you can configure this application, the pre-built integration to be able to take this ticket and just make it available in, in the relevant project in your dev tool, for example, Zira, and then um, have these two personas, the developer and the service desk person, service desk agent, talk to each other through, through activity notes. And then as the developer finishes the work, automatically that status updates are conveyed to the ticket in ITSM and ITSM, um, the service desk agent able, is able to to have a real real time status on that ticket and convey to the the customer, right? So that's the kind of capability. So we'll see a quick demo of this. One of the most exciting sort of uh, next level of capability that we have built here is is um, this automation. Take real time data for um, in in take this real-time data into account to be able to assign risk level for um, for these DevOps changes, right? So take the track record into account to be able to take take multiple of these factors into account to be able to build this, this set of um, automation so that you don't have to approve every single change. You can be intelligent, you can be selective, and that, that too you can define rules and take those uh, those different factors into account to be able to come up to a sort of a, you know, value-based judgment based on number of factors, right? So that's one. The second theme for this application is being able to collaborate with your cloud vendors, right? So with AWS Azure or any other cloud providers, um, you have, right, this collaboration of tickets and cases is very common now. Um, and so being able to have leverage the pre-built connectors or build your own connectors and consolidate either broker your ticket or consolidate your tickets across different systems and have a have a visibility rather than you know um, sort of fragmenting your case data right or ticket data into across these different systems and not having uh, a visibility into these these cases this provides you to have a single pane of glass to be able to man monitor these tickets then third theme, which is an important one, is um, these to enable these cloud operations, right? You need a little better collaboration between your cloud monitoring tools, which may be in your cloud vendors uh, environment and in your and your ITSM, right? So if you have um, your workload running into uh, performance degradations or anything like that, your ops is aware of those and there is automatic integrations between these and they allow you to uh, have right people in this in your support organization or performance team being able to look at those real time. So just a quick view into the personas that are most um, common. We, we, we touch upon a different personas and we enrich their experience, uh, multi-cloud service management does. Uh, so your service desk agent, right, in their smart IT um, user interface, they get much better uh, context into these vendor tickets or cloud tickets. DevOps managers, they, they can collaborate much more effectively with the with the, the developers using the tool. Service owners, right? This is an important persona. Cloud service owners, they uh, they can get a context into how my cloud vendors is doing, right? If I'm brokering tickets, uh, you have a dashboard that allow you to see, you know, the trend of tickets and the cases that they're working on. 
you have ability to keep track of SLAs and vendor SLAs. Are they keeping up with it? So let's dig into this first theme, you know, collaboration of DevOps with Agile Dev Tools. Um, we are shipping a number of vendors. We're shipping pre-built out of the box integration with a number of dev tools. So that includes Zira Software, um, Agile Central, and Azure DevOps. All, all three are similar tools. They allow you to define different projects, different teams, then teams define their sprints. And then within sprints, they have their user stories and feature. So um, we, we have built these integrations. We have built connectors and flows so that allow you to just turn on this capability. Um, and then we have pre-built integration with Smart IT. So you can view that Zira ticket information or any of the dev tool ticket information into, the, into your UIs. So um, again, um, you can, there's a lot of flexibility in, built into the tool. Um, you know, you can consolidate multiple Zira tickets into a single change request and things like that. Uh, and you can al always collaborate and keep status in sync. So um, really sophisticated set of capabilities with respect to Zira. Um, we have, um, um, you know, we support multiple instances of Zira. So like, uh, we've seen many of our customers have subscriptions to multiple within their enterprise. They have multiple Zira instances and they want to dynamically um, determine that instance based on the data on the ticket, right? So uh, so we have that capability. You can route it to any Zira instance. Uh, we support incident change problem work order in both ways. Um, starting these flows from either from Zero or starting these flows from ITSM. With Microsoft Azure DevOps, um, you know, again, similar integration for incident uh, in ITSM with a work item or defect on Azure DevOps. And again, both ways, uh, um, both ways, including the collaboration on this, these objects. With um, Agile Central, similar flows and capabilities available out of the box. All you need to do, like I stated before, is just point this service to your environments and transactions will start flowing. There is no setup or configuration here. Um, it's, it's that simple. And it's a cloud-based service built on an IPaaS platform. Again, with Agile Central, uh, you get the same set of capabilities. You can view the central ticket information on Smart ID interface. One more capability that we have introduced, and it, it is such a sort of milestone for DevOps. And I, 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 I challenge you, there is no one else in the industry who's even close to it. We just talked about pre-built integration between change record and ITSM and objects in Agile development tool. In a true DevOps scenario, the problem our customers run into is there are too many change requests that needs to be processed. We have enhanced that capability to basically take dynamic factors in determining a risk level. So for example, let's say you're, you're a bunch of developers working on a set of projects. They have, uh, you know, they have their own features that they are completing. We can now look at the track record for this group, software development group. And what we can do is we can assign a risk number based on how successful their changes have been in the past, right? So, so we can maintain a track record. If there's a new change comes in and it fails, then it brings their score down. If a, um, so that's sort of capability. We can also take into account the technology is service or business service risk, right? So if it is um, back-end service, front-end service, payroll service, you can define and take those factors into account. Finally, in a, in a much more sort of uh, an open manner, we can allow you to pull in some specific data from a third-party system, right? And allow you to bring that input in. For example, your unit text, unit test success rate, we can bring it in and we can uh, take that into account while assigning a risk. Uh, obviously with these capabilities, you can completely automate it 
automate these change approval process, right? So um, dynamically for every change that's being created for a DevOps item, we can allow you to say, hey, low risk ones go through the system, do not go through the approval, high risk ones go through the approval. That's the capability that we have launched. So this is, this is really exciting in the world of DevOps. Let us see a quick demo of this multi-factor risk capability. What we're gonna do here is to process a few DevOps changes through the system with a starting track record for different groups. And then we're gonna see as these changes are actually closed out as successful or, uns uh, or failed changes, we'll see how their uh, risk levels and default risk profiles are updated. And then we're gonna further process a bunch of changes. Um, so, so then we'll see the future defaulting of risk computation. We're going to start with looking at the track record for the different dev groups. Dev group one has a high risk value and dev group two has low risk value. Now we're, now we're going to create features for each of the dev group. And uh, we're, we're then going to see the corresponding change request that will be created by multi-cloud service management. So as you see, we are quickly creating these two features we're completing those in in the Zira tool and um, as you see that we have visibility into the CRQ numbers from there we we can get into smart IT and view these change records so I'm looking at the first uh, first change record you can view that this is a change which has been created for high risk because of the track record and this has to go through approval. The second change for the better better track record dev group um, has been created with a lower risk level. So it did not need to go through approval. It had directly moved into planning in progress. Now, what we're gonna do is process this change for the second dev group through the life cycle and close the change out as um, implementation unsuccessful. So, so then we're gonna see how the default or the track record for each of the group is impacted because of that. So I'm just going through the life cycle for this change now. I completed it, now I'm gonna close it as unsuccessful change. And at this point, we're going to update the track record for dev group two, and the risk is going to go up because they just did not close out a change successfully. So now their risk has gone up from five to 25. Now what I'm going to do is create a new, create a new feature for this uh, dev group two again, and going to put it through the system and the multi-cloud service management is gonna create a new change request. And now this new change request, because of the increased risk value, is created a change with higher risk level, and it is now forcing this change to go through the approval. That's kind of the automation that, that we have built here, right? And you can see visibility into the zero ticket information in Smart ID. The, the next theme that we want to spend a little bit more time here is this ability to have incident management, you know, this collaborative incident management in this brave new world of clouds, right? So as we have many different providers in our organizations, we have a lot of these tickets and cases that we want to manage. And uh, um, so you want to have a single pane of glass you, so that you have some control, some context, and that's exactly what this application does. You have a ticket you're using, suppose you're using AWS as compute, you have applications running in AWS, you get a ticket in your service desk, hey, my app server customer complains that the application is running slow, what you wanna do is um, you know, do your due diligence and push the ticket out to AWS, right? We do that out of the box using the connector and pre-built integration, and then we can keep them in sync and allow our agents to collaborate in much more easier fashion. 
so this is this is the AWS integration. Um, just talked about it. Um, the AWS support API allows you to do that. Uh, they have a case object. It's kind of similar to this. Um, you know, it's similar to the, the the approach that we've seen with the Dev Tools. Um, and it is a standard ticket brokering SIAM use case that's been there in the industry forever. What's new is that this is pre-built. You just use it. You, you, when you subscribe to the service, you can just start using the application uh, or, or, or this integration pretty much on, on day one. Another pre-built capability is out-of-the-box um, sort of ticket consolidations to ITSM from Service Cloud. So um, Salesforce Service Cloud, many of our customers use it for external customer support. Uh, you can, you have the tickets that are coming in there that requires IT attention, you can, you can configure uh, the system to be able to pull in those tickets from Service Cloud, bring it into ITSM and, and collaborate and keep them sync. Um, Another consolidation use case with the with the Zira Service Desk application, we do that uh, out of the box. Uh, pretty much, um, you know, similar capability. If you are using multiple remedy instances, some of our customers are for different purposes, and they need some sort of a, a consolidation or brokering between these instances. That's also available out of the box. Next theme here really is a theme that we will be adding more and more capabilities to is this cloud monitoring, right? So, um, and, and this is this is a use case where, you know, people have dealt with it differently in the past, right? So, um, enterprises have their own monitoring tools and those tools can monitor on-prem workload as well as cloud workload. Some of them can, um, but uh, as the cloud is becoming more and more as a norm, these cloud vendors like AWS Azure are building monitoring capabilities. So what we have done is build pre-built integration with the monitoring piece that comes standard with Azure Monitor. So if you can define your alerts and rules in Azure Monitor and the ones that you want to create a ticket in ITSM for, we can just do that out of the box and it comes pre-built. All you need to do is just turn it on. Let's see a quick demo of this capability. So I'm logged in here in Azure Monitor. I have a virtual machine and I have my alert rules defined. I'm looking at my alert rule, and this is the way it is designed is that whenever my uh, a virtual machine goes down, um, I like an alert to be raised, and then I have defined an action group for that alert that, hey, push it out to um, through the web hook to multi-cloud service management. So now I'm looking at a, a virtual machine. I'm gonna try to start the virtual machine now. And as virtual machine is started, now you can see. And um, now I'm going to cause it to stop. So I'm going to cause an action to stop this virtual machine. And um, and that would meet the trigger condition that we have specified in the Azure alert. So it's stopping the machine. Machine was stopped. So that would have raised an alert. So if you go to Azure monitor or alert dashboard, we will see an increased count on the alert, and then uh, and then we can s we it would have pushed an incident into Smart IT and ITSM, and we can see we get an update in your activity feed with the description as defined on the alert text. So you have this incident that's just been created in real time for that alert from Azure. Right, and similar to other use cases, you can view a bunch of the uh, other information from alert onto Smart IT interface, and you have the ability to drill down. So, uh, um, so all of those capabilities are supported. One other capability that's targeted towards this cloud service owner persona is, uh, is a dashboard and that allows you to have a time-phased view of these tickets that are that you're brokering. So it's a, a you know 
So you have data week over week, how, how many tickets are they closing? What are the not notifications that have come in from them? Are they keeping up with their SLAs? So that's, that's the sort of the view that allows you to have much better visibility into these, these uh, collaboration with these vendors. So uh, here's an example of it, right? You, you can see the different cloud services that may, you may have deployed and within those, you know, how the vendor is doing and uh, over time you will get a history of things and tickets and cases that they have resolved. Just getting a little bit into the architecture here, right? This, so this solution, the SaaS service is designed on next generation iPaaS platform. The ITSM application can be on-prem or in cloud, any cloud and uh, multi-cloud service management, of course, is only available in, in BMC cloud or Azure or AWS cloud. And your third party applications could be anywhere, again, on-prem or in any cloud. But this is a connector base. base. So we have a connector for ITSM, uh, multi-cloud connector, on the other side, the vendor connectors, and they are put together in a, in a that hub and spoke type of arrangement. So it allows you to reuse these integration components for any use case, be it out of the box use case or uh, custom use cases. One capability, again, uh, this, this we have to understand this. This is a pre-built integration that that you're you're subscribed to. So um, we provide you UI-based tools that allow you to configure or tweak, right? So for example, the the standard flow is that you have a source and a destination, right? Um, so you, let's say you have ITSM as your source connector. Um, Zira is your destination connector, and the flow that we are shipping, let's say incident. Uh, that you, you, you're working with this incident to Zira issue. Now, this flow has a trigger condition, right? So the trigger condition allows you to define what are the incidents, which are the incidents uh, that you want to push to Zira. So you have a UI-based tool that allow you to define set of qualifiers and um, that says, hey, when incident resolution category is so-and-so or contains XYZ or status includes this, then pick it up and send it to Zira. So you have that sort of flexibility in, in tweaking the tool or defining your criteria that suits to, to your business. Um, then there is a mapping element to it, right? So um, I, we pull in a relevant ITSM incident of attributes. We have a new UI. Uh, that allows you to map these um, between I, uh, ITSM incident and Zira issue. And then with that mapping, we have a lot of enrichment possible, right? So using the qualifiers or transformations, a static transformation, dynamic transformation, defaulting of values, things like that. Those are all available through an UI. And then we ship a bunch of connectors. Um, there, there are uh, many connectors that we are shipping out of the box, connectors and uh, pre-built integrations. But if you have a need for an use case that is not supported out of the box, you can build your own connector and put it together with other out of the box connectors. And in that process, by the way, you can reuse um, you know, many of these components, for example, ITSM to multi-cloud flows that left part of the equation, you can just reuse. You do not have to rebuild that again. Finally, i like to mention that um, this is the vision, right? I think this is extremely important that we have, um, we have a view into it, right? And this kind of explains from BMC's point of view where we're going, right? We're trying to build we're going in a direction where we want to have industry's first end-to-end -end platform for ITSM and ITOM powered by AI and ML. What it means is we want to bring, optimize, discover, monitor, service, remediate together on a single unified platform, which is powered by Cognitive. Thank you everyone for your time.